what, what part of your uh, of your body can't you it doesn't respond? Um, it's like from right on top of my navel T8 on down. Um, I don't have any feelings from there down. Uh, and how long have you been in this uh, situation? Since November 11th of 2001. Never forget the day. Okay, so it's like it's like over a dozen years now. Yeah, absolutely. And what does this product allow you to do? Well, instead of just existing in life in my wheelchair, it allows me to participate in life. Walk around, talk, stand, talk to people eye to eye, look at the sunroofs of the new cars, things that we take for granted. So uh, uh, my paraplegia, together with this, has, to me, made me a better, more observant, more sensitive person. Now can you get to the Met game okay? Even though I went in my wheelchair, um, the, uh, the uh, reward wasn't approved yet, but I would like to go to a game. I'm sure I have more players around me then. But it would be great. Let's see how it works. Sure, I'm gonna... What's he doing now on the watch? He's selecting the mode, so he's choosing to put it into into walk mode. Uh -huh. He tilts his upper body forward ever so slightly. The motion sensor picks it up, and he starts walking. He's in complete control of the system. When he wants to stop, when he wants to stop, he can stop. When he wants to uh, sit, he can sit. He's he's walking the system. The system's not walking him. And how does it work? There are motors and gears in the hardware on the legs. And there's software in the backpack, and there's a tilt sensor on the side of the device. When he shifts his upper body, the tilt sensor picks it up and kicks the gears and motors into motion. Uh -huh. and, and they move him gently? They move him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a very natural heel-toe strike. You'll see when he walks, uh -huh. it's similar to uh, our walking. Uh -oh. And that means that he's not putting extra pressures or forces on the movement of his legs because it's moving in a very natural pattern. Thank you. Okay, let's give him a mic. So, Gene, you're a tall guy. Yeah, I kind of forgot that um, until I got up. My son was born January of that same year, and this happened to him in November, so he never saw me walk before until uh, so he was like 12, going on 13, and I had this on. And um, at that time, he was the type of kid that can't stop talking, why this, why that, you know, this, that, and the other. And for the first time, he saw me get up, his jaw dropped, and he didn't have a word to say. He didn't know what to say. Um, but it was emotional for me to take a walk with him, because uh, I never did that before. And then after that, a few months after that, my wife came, and that was even more emotional because she, I thought she was going to faint. And um, the cameras were on her and she said, I remember that I met him this way. And I had to really compose myself because you know, she really got me with that one. So, yeah, but it's been uh, not only physically but psychologically uh, a blessing. How, how psychologically has it affected you? Well, like I said, you know, living your life in a wheelchair. I feel like you're just existing. You're not, you just exist, you're there. I put this on and I participate. I take walks with friends. I go to Starbucks in the VA. They have a Starbucks in the lobby. I get coffee. I walk around, talk to people like I'm talking to the camera right now, eye to eye, standing up. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 you start doing that. Next thing you know, you start setting your limits higher. Maybe I can try this, maybe I can try that. and. Um, yeah, and that's why. That's why I say that. Uh, what's your ethnicity? I'm, I'm Hispanic, Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican? Yeah. What did you think about Israel before you encountered this product? I'll be honest. I never had uh, a problem with Israel. Um, um, I've had it, uh, Jewish friends before this. Yeah. Um, but as far as thinking of them um, as the leader of innovation and, and, and technology, you know, I didn't see them that way. 
Um, usually you talk about Israel, you think about a country that's trying to defend itself constantly year round, and that's all I thought about Israel. Um, now, because of this, I would say I look at it a little different. Um, I'm very grateful to them. They're very caring. Um, when they put this out there, not only for their own people, but for everybody. And um, yeah, um, I'm glad that Amit Gopher, I came across him, which is the inventor, the Israeli inventor. And I think they're great people. I really do. Not the way the news depicts them? Well, again, I've had Jewish friends before this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I really didn't accept things like that. I don't see why the news would depict them the way they do sometimes. Um, they're just a country trying to defend themselves. That's what it comes down to. Something anybody would do at any scale, even one man to another would defend himself and his family. Um, so no, I don't see that side of Israel. I think they're very good people, uh, very caring people. Um, and I hope to go there someday. And walk around with the rest of the guys. Yeah, that's where they are. The event is that he's invited me too, so we're working on making that happen. Uh, what caused your injury originally? What was that? What, what caused your initial injury? I had a fall at work from a ladder, a 20 foot fall. The ladder landed one way and I landed on my back right across it. So that's what did it. Um, it's okay, I'm a man of faith. Um, I feel that God does things for a reason. I have touched a lot of lives using this. Um, like I say to people, this is much bigger than me. Um, people always ask me, when am I getting one? Do I want, I do want one, but I'm not focused on that um, right now. It's like my Israeli counterparts. Um, I'm more focused on getting the message out there so other people in my situation can have access to it. And that's my motivation right now to this. Thank you very much. So well. Fantastic. Thank you.